Welcome to The Painting Coach and in this video I'm going to show you how to paint the new Crute Wall Shaper from the brand new Crute Hunting Pack box from Games Workshop. A huge thank you to them for sending it out to me early so I can get a head start on making some content for you. Don't forget all the tips and tricks I show you on this Crute Wall Shaper can also be used on all of the other Crute that come in the box. Let's get painting. The first thing I've done is prime this model with some Death Guard Green Spray. And now I've taken some Wraith Bone Spray and sprayed this lightly from above. This gives me a nice two-tone coverage on the model. This is what we call a Zenith or Prime, and it's perfect for how we're going to paint this Crute. We're going to use a lot of contrast paint because it's absolutely perfect for organic models like this. We're then going to bump up the level to get a really nice finish using some layer paints. So the first thing we're going to do is block in all of this Crute's skin. Now I'm going for a greeny skin colour, so I'm going to take some Militarum Green Contrast Paint and mix it 50-50 with Contrast Medium. And what I'm looking to do here is just be very tidy and only paint this on the flesh areas. We will highlight it later on, but we do just want to take care as we work our way around the model. Now there's not a huge amount of flesh on display with this one because there are lots of leather bags, pouches and strappings, but if you are painting some of the Crude Carnival Warriors, there's going to be quite a lot more. Once that's completely dry, we're going to tackle his cloak, and that's because it's quite awkward to get to. So the first thing we're going to do is take some Gulliman Flesh Contrast Paint. Now it's really important you haven't got too much on your brush for this, because you can see where I've got too much, you can see it really does flood the mini. We don't want that effect in this area. So what we're going to do is paint all of the inside of the cloak with the Gulliman Flesh. We're then going to go around the outside of the cloak with the Gulliman Flesh, and just paint maybe sort of 5 millimeters in towards the center. Now, we're going to work very quickly because whilst that's still wet, we're then going to take some Mantis Warriors Contrast Paint and paint this all over the middle of the back of that cloak. Now, I'm being very liberal with this Mantis Warriors paint job. I'm just making sure that I work it into all the recesses and I don't miss anything. And then when I get to where that Gulliman Flesh is still wet, I just want to stab it and stipple it a little bit to help it blend into each other. And as this starts to dry, you'll really start to see a very nice transition. One thing I did do is with the, some of that leftover Militarum Green Contrast Paint, I just stippled that into those recesses, again, just to give a little bit more shadow on the folds. When everything was completely dry, I took a little bit of Croak Green, which is a wash, it's a very thin wash, and just used this to stipple on the inside of the cloak, along those kind of really rough areas. Now, this is an optional step, you don't have to do this, but I think it just adds a nice little bit of nuance of colour in there. Now there are quite a lot of browns in the contrast paint range and I'm going to make use of some of them. The first one however is not so much a brown, it's more of a flesh colour, and that's dark oath flesh. So all I'm doing with this is just choosing some areas where I want kind of a lighter ready leather colour. So I'm going for the vest that's got the armour plate on and also those straps across his thighs. I'm taking my time applying this, just working it across those areas, being very careful not to spill any of this on the flesh. I'm then going to take some Garagax Sewer, which is itself a nice brown colour, and I'm going to use this to paint the strappings on his lower legs and also on his arms. Again, being really careful not to paint over bits that we've already finished. Now, as I'm working through these browns and using lots of different ones, I hope you can see how you can use these across the rest of the crew, and you can use them in different areas as well to really build up some nice effects and also some nice variation across the models. For painting some of the wood elements, I'm going to use some Fire Slayer Flesh. Now, I am going to put two or maybe even three coats of Fire Slayer Flesh on. And I'm using from on the arrows and also the handle of that pistol. Because if you look at the artwork, it is more of a wooden effect as opposed to something that's metal. And to really build up that dark colour, I will need more than one coat. For all of the spines on the model, so we've got the spines coming out the back of his head, now we've also got some along the legs and the arms, and also for some of the strapping, I'm going to use Saigo Brown. Now this is a very powerful contrast paint, so make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, and also be very careful around those bits you've already finished. As it dries, you will get a nice little bit of a transition, but it's really, really important to just take your time, and obviously don't have too much on your brush. If you are worried about this, and you can always dab your brush on a paper towel before you go to the model. Before we finish up all of the leather, I just want to paint the ton. And the colour I'm using with this is Volupus Pink. Now this is really simple and straightforward to do. It's just, I thought it's better to do it now, because if we do make some mistakes, it's easier to tidy up. To paint all of the spines on the back of the cloak, 
as well as the scales, I'm going to use a Kelly and Green contrast paint. Now, this is going to give me a bluey green color, which is different to the black color you'll see on the box art. But I just thought something like this is nice and different, really helps it pop and stand out. For any red strapping, such as we've got on the weapon here, or if you're using the staff option, I'm basing this with Flesh Terror's red contrast paint. Now, this is a really nice, rich contrast paint, but you do have to be careful because if you do spill it on things like the flesh, it is a bit harder to get off. To finish up all of the leather, we're going to take some black Templar contrast paint. And I'm just going to be very careful with this again, only taking my time to make sure I get it on those parts of the model where I want it. So we've got the holster and the belt around the front, as well as the clip that he's got his knife in. The other thing I'm going to do with this are the quills on the arrows. And I'm also going to paint his bow. When it comes to painting the bow, it's a bit more useful to have a bigger brush. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got that so I can really get the contrast paint on here and let it do the job it's designed to. I am, however, going to be very careful around the hands because, again, I don't want to spill this because it'll be really awkward to clean up. We'll leave the contrast paint for now and go back to traditional layer paints. So the first thing I want to do is base that shoulder pad, which I'm going to have predominantly red. So I'm going to take some corn red and just work this all over the area. Now I've thinned my corn red a little bit, so it's going to take two coats to cover this. And I'm quite happy with that because I don't want to put it on too thickly because it may obscure some of the runic detail that are carved into that shoulder pad. Next up, I'm going to paint all of the silver elements and the colour I'm going to use for that is Sir Coates Silver. So very similar to everything we've done so far is just take your time. There are a few silver elements, but not a huge amount. It's just making sure that we get them all. So we've got the blades on the weapon, we've got the pistol. Obviously, we've got that chest piece in the middle as well. But there are lots of bracelets, necklaces, and also on the war shaper, he's got some decorative elements along his face as well. I'm not sure if they're staples or if they're meant to be like earrings. I'm not sure. But make sure you catch them as well. While I've got the circled silver out, I'm going to use it to highlight the bow as well. And I'm just going to do this by dragging the brush along the edges, but not in a smooth motion. I'm going to tap it along the edges just to give the impression of some weathering and that the black paint is worn off and you can see the silver metal underneath. When that's dry, I'm going to shade the silver and the shoulder pad with the same colour, and that's some null oil. So what I'm going to do is work it over these areas, making sure it doesn't settle too much in the recesses. I don't want it to pull too heavily. So I'm going to control the amount I have on my brush. I'm also going to be very careful while I'm painting it. I'm not going to be very violent with my brush. I'm going to be quite smooth because I don't want it to splash and spit over finished parts. Now, unfortunately, I have lost some footage where I painted in the design on the shoulder pad. So all I've done is painted a V using some rack art flesh. Now, this is very straightforward. So just make sure you've got thin paint and you can correct any mistakes with corn red afterwards. I want to add a little bit more depth and shading to the silver on the breastplate. So I'm going to shade it with some Agrax Earth Shade. And I'm also going to shade the entirety of the shoulder pad using the Agrax Earth Shade as well. When that's completely dry, I'm going to go back in with some Rakar Flesh and start highlighting up that design. Now, the thing I'm going to focus on doing here is just stippling the Rakar Flesh on. So leaving some of the Agrax Earth Shade in the recesses. And this is a really nice, easy, effective way of building up a little bit of a highlight but not having it be very uniform, because if you can imagine this little shoulder pad, it's probably seen a lot of action, it's probably quite battered. I'm then going to do the same using some Evil Sun Scarlet. So I'm making sure I haven't got too much on my brush, and I've taken most of the paint away. I'm going to stipple this across the red areas to start to highlight them back up. The other thing I'm going to do, just to tidy up that design a little bit, is just catch some of the edges of it so it looks like the white paint is chipped away and you can see the red paint underneath. So take your time with this, less is definitely more. I'm also going to highlight any red strapping that I've got on the model as well. To finish off the red, I'm going to take some Wild Rider Red and for the shoulder pad, I'm going to use this fairly sparingly but just on those areas that are perhaps going to catch a little bit more damage and of course for any red strapping, I'm going to get that done as well. To finish up highlighting the whiter parts or the lighter parts on the shoulder pad, I'm going to take some pallid witch flesh. And again, I'm going to make sure I've got too much on my brush and I'm just going to stipple this across the area, making sure to give it a little bit of a rough highlight. And again, when this all comes together, it'll look nice and battered and worn. To highlight the rest of the silver, I'm going to take some chrome from Valeo Model Air. And essentially what I'm looking to do here is catch any sharp edges. So we're not going to do a huge amount of highlighting, 
the important thing is that we're fairly subtle with it and in particular on the chest plate we want to give the impression of wear and tear and dinks so we're just going to put some dots and scratches on making sure that we're not going overboard it's better to put a little on and always then go back and add more now if you look at the box art there's a lot of brassy elements on here as well but rather than use more paint what we're going to do is just take a contrast paint and just use that across some of the silver so the color i'm using is agaros dunes now we are going to need to put two coats on just to get the color to pop like we want but all we're doing is painting this over the metallic and you can see it starts to give a brassy gold look so when we put a second coat on after this has dried it's going to look really nice and effective and it saves having to go in and use some of the brass colors or like a brass metallic shade it and then highlight it let's start highlighting all of the leather then and the first color we're going to highlight is all of the black so we're going to take a little bit of mechanica's standard gray you can see i've got barely any on my brush here and all i'm going to do is rather again than drag it across the edges i'm going to tap it across the edges because this gives me a nice effect of worn leather now i might want to put some scratches across other elements as well but generally start off like this because it'll give you a nice idea of the direction of travel We'll then finish the black by putting in some administratum grey scratches. Now we want to use this fairly sparingly and the key thing here is to get it inside of the Mechanica's grey from the last step because that will give you a nice transition. If it looks too bright then you can just pop some null oil over it to bring it back down a little bit. To shade all of the fleshy areas on the cloak we're going to take some Kislev flesh. Now generally this is a fairly easy and straightforward step. We just want to drag the brush along and get a nice crisp highlight. However, we do want to add some scratches in there. So at general points, we're just going to paint something either horizontal or diagonally towards the bottom, starting just off the edge and joining into the edge. Now, if you have a look at the box art, you can see how the heavy metal painters have done this. We don't want to go overboard and do too much, but we do just want to add a little bit on there for some interest. We'll highlight all of the brown spines using Scrag Brown. Now this is a nice bright orangey brown but it is quite thin and that works in our favour. So when we start to drag our brush along all these sharp edges, what we'll see is as it dries it blends down a little bit and it gives you a really nice effective highlight. If you want it brighter, such as towards the back of the spines, then you can just put a second coat of scrag brown on and that'll really help make it pop. To highlight the wooden elements, I'm going to use Tau Light Ochre. Now make sure I've got a very, very good point on my brush. And I'm just going to try and paint some wood grain in across the handle of the pistol. Now this is one of those things, again, it's completely optional to do this. You don't have to do it. But give it a whirl, give it a practice just to get some brush control in. And I'm also going to highlight the tips of the arrow shafts as well, just to help them stand out a bit. All right, it's time to highlight a lot of that contrast paint we've put on. So the first thing we're going to do is take some Saigo Brown. I'm going to make, mix some wraith bone into this in a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm then going to go along and start highlighting all of the edges. Now this paint is going to be quite thin, so make sure you haven't got too much on your brush because it'll get out of control. If you do make any mistakes, I made a couple here or there where I put a little bit too much in. I can just dry my brush off, put a little bit of Saigo Brown on, not much, and just paint this over. And what you'll see by doing it that way is that actually it'll act a little bit like a glaze and start to give you a bit of a nice transition. So work your way around doing this with the Saigo Brown on all of the straps that you painted that colour. For all of the strappings that we painted with Garagak Sewer, we're now going to go and highlight all of this. And it's very similar to how we did the Saigo Brown. It's a 50-50 mix of Wraithbone and Garagak Sewer. Now if you can see these side by side on the palette, you can see there's a very different uh, colour effect that you've managed to create. So what we're looking to do here is highlight all of the edges, any scratches or scratches. There's a lot of folds on these parts because they're on quite dynamic parts of the model so it's easy enough to pick up where you should highlight again if you happen to put too much on don't worry just take a little bit of garagax sewer on its own very little on your brush and use this to blend across the area and that'll give you a really nice transition to highlight all the parts that we painted with dark old flesh we're going to go back to that kislev flesh that we used on the cloak and again this is a very simple and straightforward highlighting technique you're just catching the most raised folds and because these are on quite dynamic parts of the model it's really easy to pick them up by dragging your brush along them we'll highlight all of the flesh next so this is an opportunity to put some nice sharp highlights on there and also clean up any little mistakes we may have made accidentally so the color reason of this is krieg khaki which i've got the old edge version of so I'm not thinning this down at all because it's thin enough out of the pot, but you may need to thin it depending on the consistency. In terms of what we're looking to paint, generally, really, it's just all of the bits that uh, are sticking out. So we can add some texture on. So 
on the fingers and the feet, for example, we can paint horizontally against the grain. Again, because this adds a nice little bit of texture. If we happen to have put on a little bit too much Militarum green contrast paint, then we can use this to feather across that area as well and just blend it in a little bit with the rest of the model so it doesn't look too stark. I'm then going to highlight all of the spines on the back of the cloak, all of the scales, and also any nails that the model's got using Temple Guard Blue. Now, this is a nice, strong blue colour, and it'll just shift the hue on those spines and scales a little bit from a greeny blue to more of a, a blue-green. Now, you might ask what the difference is there, but as I'm painting, you'll be able to see it. It just reads a little bit more like blue as opposed to the green that it reads before we do the highlight stage. Now, there are lots of bindings across the model, just keeping everything together, so we'll paint them next. I will also do the bowstring at this point as well. So the colour I'm going to use this is Zandri Dust. Now, it's really important to take your time across all those leather elements that you only painted on the fastening parts and not on the bits of leather. As for the bow, you can be a little bit more free with this. We just want to paint that strap so it's nice, easy and straightforward. To highlight all those areas, I want to use a bright colour and the colour I'm using is Bright Ivory from Pro Acryl. So this is a very, very bright, bright, bright bone colour. It's much brighter than something like Screaming Skull. Now, if you haven't got Bright Ivory, you could either use Screaming Skull, which is fine, or you could mix a little bit of white paint into Screaming Skull as well, just to push the contrast up a little bit so it's that little bit brighter. And all we're looking to do is just paint over the bits we've already painted with Zandri Dust. But this is a really easy step because what we're doing is just dragging the brush along the shape of the model so we get some nice crisp highlights. The beak on this crute is a little bit darker and it will be the same for all the other crute as well. So I'm just going to take some Bane Blade Brown. Now this is a very thin paint anyway, but I am going to put a little bit of water into it. And then I'm going to wipe most of it off my brush. I'm going to paint this in a downward motion for the top of the beak and I'm going to build this up slowly. So as I put that first coat on, I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to paint more of this into the recesses and on just that lower part of the beak. For the bottom of the jaw, I'm going to paint this all in Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to focus on giving it a nice, solid coat of Bane Blade Brown. Once I'm happy with the transition, I'm going to mix some bright ivory in with the Bane Blade Brown and just draw some vertical lines across the parts of the model where you've got those indentations. This will help to create a really nice highlight. If you want to, and if you've gone too far with the Bane Blade Brown, you can just take a little bit of Creed Khaki and blend it back up. It's fairly easy and straightforward to do this. The last step is painting the eyes and I'm going to take some flash kits yellow and I hope I managed to achieve this on camera because it's one of the hardest things to paint. So that's a nice easy step and this wall shaper is pretty much done apart from the base. So there we have it, this wall shaper is done and ready to lead that crude hunt impact. I'm really happy with how he's come out. I really hope you've picked up some hints and tips for painting all of the crude models that you get in this box. It should be fairly straightforward using things like contrast and speed paints. If you're still not 100% sure, check out this video here where you can see how I do it even quicker than this, and I will see you next time.